And I asked Ben and Amy, if they would, to prepare a, a personal statement uh, for this ceremony. I think it's so important because it's their wedding ceremony. And so each one of them is prepared. I don't know if you shared it with each other. This may be the first time you've heard it. We'll find out. Ben wrote, uh, Amy is my entire world and my partner in everything. She has been there to support me during the hardest times and the best times in both of our lives. I can't imagine spending my life without her. She is loving and strong, unlike anyone I've ever met. And Amy wrote about Ben. Shortly after Ben met me, I almost lost my life to my addiction. Ben had so many reasons and chances to do the easy thing and just walk away. But he stayed and he said, let's face these nightmares together. Ben saw a hope and a strength in me that I couldn't see in myself. And I found a kind of love that I have never known before. A love so unconditional and powerful that it saved me. I finally understand what it means to only need love because I've stopped searching for all the highs and lows of this world and know that all I need to make me the happiest is standing right in front of me. Ben is reliable. He's been there for Amy every time she's needed him. And in turn, been there for our whole family. Ben is loyal. Ben's love for Amy is so strong and so genuine that his loyalty never comes into question. We can be all those crazy things. Um, creative, loving, compassionate, um, passionate, uh, very passionate, successful, strong, and very resilient women. Um, what I know about you, Amy, is that you are all that and so much more. It's, it's very easy to see why Ben fell in love with you. You, you are my jewel. Hey, blow them a giant kiss. <laughs> hey. Um, but one thing that comes to mind first is if any of you know Amy, back in the day, she used to do this thing where she flicks her nose. <laughs> Amy has quit the habit. I still do it. <laughs> Scripture paints a vivid picture of what love is and what love isn't. As a couple, if you always think the best of each other, if you always look for the best in each other, 
If you forgive even when it hurts and you hold tight to each other during the ups and downs, you will find yourselves richly blessed at the end of life and with a better understanding of the love that God shows towards us. Today, you'll begin a new life, not as two individuals, but as one flesh and one heart. You're not simply agreeing to live in the same house and to share a bank account. You're establishing a covenant with each other, and most importantly, before God, which is a lifelong covenant of love and commitment to each other. Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say, I love you, at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. I declare that Ben and Amy are now husband and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state of Texas. Whom God has joined together, let no man separate. You, sir, may now kiss your bride. reminds me of what we read in Scripture in 1 Corinthians 13. It's a passage that's probably familiar to most of us. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends.